Hello friends, I'm glad to welcome you to the Captain German channel and today we have an educational video. I want to remind you that we are currently developing an inshore skipper course at our Captain German sailing school and this, the course, will be available soon. At the moment I decided to simply share one of the lessons with you because there are many questions. Many questions are asked on this topic and since I already had this material prepared in my course, I decided to present it to you. Today, we will be talking about AIS, the Automatic Identification System, or AIS as it is often called here. What is this? How does it work on a boat? And why is it needed? That's exactly what we're going to find out today. Are you ready? Let's get started. Why is it netted? There are already radars, and on radars you can see other vessels. However, radars only show direct visibility when your view is unobstructed, not obstructed. Imagine a scenario where you are sailing on a river. I will illustrate why it is necessary, so you can understand. You are sailing on a river or fjord, for example, a large mountain blocking everything, and then you come around the bend to face a huge barge and you start figuring out the problem. So to prevent this, the barge transmits data about itself. You check and see that it's a barge. It's moving at, well, 55 uh, knots. I don't know. You go 155 knots, and so you understand what's waiting for you around the corner, the automatic identification system. But in addition to sending their data, they also transmit a huge amount of incredibly valuable information that directly impacts your safety. Let's get into this a bit more. There is a computer on the boat. The data about your vessel is entered into the computer. Your name, the name of the boat, dimensions, type of boat and so on. This computer broadcasts this data, how this process works and what data it transmits, I will explain in this same episode. Let's now understand the principle. You transmit your information, other vessels receive this data and it creates a large network where all vessels are aware of each other. Each one is signaling, I am here. My vessel is this, I'm going at this speed, at this course. And you can calculate in advance who intersects with whom, at what point, in how much time, over what distance. And by turning five degrees, you understand that you are already avoiding a collision, passing either behind or in front or something like that. And so you can plan your route in advance without intersecting with other vessels. This can also be done in part with the help of radar and routing. But with this, you need to track each object specifically, while in AIS it works automatically, meaning all the boats. Everyone knows about each other, and you can even configure intersecting courses and distances. For example, if we are more than two miles apart from a vessel, that's a customizable setting. Your alarm goes off and that's it. You're on your way, the alarm beeps, and then you can contact or simply make some course correction. And that's it. It's a great system. I really like it. Now, let's talk about AIS classes. There is AIS class A, which is used on commercial vessels. There is AIS class B, which is installed on pleasure craft, that is on small boats. AIS class A is mandatory for any commercial vessels engaged in commercial activities, both as a receiver and transmitter. This is AIS Class A. AIS Class B is for yachts. He can function both as a transmitter and a receiver, or just as a receiver, allowing you to understand what's around you, or with a transmitter, so that everyone knows what you are doing. Your data will be entered into it, and I believe it is very sensible to have both a receiver and a transmitter. Although the law doesn't require it, it's about your safety and convenience. Why should you bother taking bearings, calculating how uh, 
you are crossing paths with a vessel you are approaching or not, you touch the CPA, check it out, big CPA and goodbye, small CPA. That's when you start to take action, but you already know what's happening in advance. And don't need to sit and constantly monitor all the vessels, especially if it's somewhere, if it's somewhere like Singapore, where it's just chaos. Trying to keep track of everything is a lot of unnecessary effort. If you have a problem, you need to deal with it when it arises and you should monitor it. But with AIS, why not? Where the AIS system is located on the boat, look, open the panel and here is the main AIS computer that does everything. It connects to your laptop. You access the web application or the special software that comes with this AIS. You can change your dimensions, AIS, sensor location and so on. However, to change your MMS, I number, you need to contact a dealer because you have authorized people for this. These uh, are authorized people to prevent any fraud by regular users. It's naturally not allowed to do this yourself unless you know the passwords, which are likely somewhere. However, I am telling you how it works legally and uh, you'll figure out how to use it yourself. The receiver collects the received data and the transceiver transmits your data. If you equip your boat with only a receiver, you will see everyone, but no one will see you. If you only have a transceiver, you will transmit only your own data, but won't see anything else. Two units costing under $1,000. The receiver and transceiver allow you to see everything and connect to NMEA on your chart plotter, displaying all the data on surrounding vessels. How does the AIS system work? It operates through the VHF channel. 161.975 is channel 87 Bravo. 162.025 is channel 88 Bravo. To prevent errors, there is data correction. Two channels are cross-verified and the correction is done by the AIS system itself. It's a super convenient, super reliable system. Does AIS have a separate antenna or not? In most boats, it works somewhat differently. There is a separate AIS antenna that transmits and receives data. There are many different companies such as Navica, Digital Yacht, Easter eggs and many others, but they all basically do the same thing. Just look at the compatibility and the NMEA protocol that they use to transmit everything. There is an antenna splitter. This is a box where two antennas are plugged in. The first antenna connects to your VHF radio and the second antenna connects to the AIS and then through a regular splitter. The data goes to a standard VHF antenna, which you use with regular VHF radio built into the boat. There are systems that output this directly to the radio. I'll show you now. I have a Simrad radio. You go in and can see the vessels right on the radio. But of course, this is a workaround and old school, though the radio is modern, it's terribly inconvenient. You go into the AIS uh, vessel list, you click and see the same data, but it's uh, inconvenient if all your navigation equipment is just a radio, well, maybe you can use it. If you have a proper chart plotter that receives data, it might be better to use the chart plotter, but as a backup option, it works if all your electronics fail. You have a radio station, you connect it to a battery and attach the AIS, and you will understand what is happening around you. Lea Lea Alwa, an interesting name, is also a catamaran measuring 14 by 8 meters. So these are all modern catamarans, which are always active, continuously transmitting just like ours. Let's summarize how the whole system works. Antenna. Through the antenna, a coaxial cable descends into a splitter. In the splitter, it divides into the radius and to the AIS. When data analysis and collection takes place, an additional cable runs from the AIS, which connects to the in my radio station. You can see all the data received through the AIS antenna on the computer. That's essentially how the whole system works. So your boat transmits data about you, who receives it and how it proceeds further. There are several systems. If a vessel passing by has constant internet access, and most commercial vessels do, 
there are services like marine traffic where you can see the link and visit the site to view data on all the vessels that transmit their data online. So it's a large system that collects all the data. First option. This is when any passing vessel with internet access transmits your data. Second, if you are sailing somewhere near the shore, there are AIS towers that the Coast Guard and General Marine Traffic Control use just marine traffic control, they also collect this data from all passing vessels and transmit it further to the internet. So from anywhere in the world, you can see where any vessel is located. You see, on marine traffic, there are a huge number of ships, all transmitting data. Third, there is such a system which is just being introduced now as AIS, which is SAT AIS or Satellite Space AIS, consists of small satellites, such as cube-shaped ones, 20 by 20 by 20, which collects data. It doesn't work very well, but sometimes even in the middle of the ocean, you unexpectedly appear. Right now, it's quiet. More and more satellites are being launched and they're working better and better. It used to be something unique, but now, for example, the Atlantic is already well covered and the SAS is working just excellently. Now, what do we see on our chart plotter? Aside from the information about the vessels, what data is most valuable for us for yachtsmen? Everything related to safety. Two parameters, CPA and this is TCPA. CPA shows at what distance we are passing the vessel we are measuring and uh, TCPA is the time at which we will pass that vessel. These are the two main parameters. You should prioritize when you tap on the AIS icon, CPA and TCPA. You can look at the rest of the information just out of curiosity, but we'll come back to that a little later. Now, let's consider what data the automatic identification system transmits and how often it does so for class A and class B AIS. Regardless of the class of AIS A or B, the following data is transmitted. Maritime mobile service identity, boat name and call sign. If it's a commercial vessel, then there is an IMO number. Some pleasure yachts have an IMO number, for example, ours doesn't. But some of my acquaintances have an IMO number. This means the International Maritime Organization assigns ships receive their numbers. Some have them, some don't, but all commercial ones have IMO numbers, while it's unlikely for pleasure crafts. Then data about size and course is transmitted. I'll show you a table, just a screenshot, so you can see what's included. About CPA and TCPA and heading to, that's the course the vessel is going, as I mentioned before. Now, how does AIS class A differ from AIS class B? Both AIS classes, at speeds less than two knots, they transmit data about themselves, even with the electronic equipment on the boat turned off every three minutes. But the difference is if the vessel is moving in the field at a speed of more than two knots, then AIS class A transmits data about itself every two to 10 seconds. The AIS class B, since we are generally slower, transmits data about itself every 30 seconds. That's the main technical difference. If the heading line in front is long, it means the vessel is moving quickly. Pay more attention to this. If it's short, then it will likely be slow, like you. Goodbye. This will be more like chess than an RPG game, so there will be time to think. There's another difference in class AAIS. You can manually input data, for example, status on anchor underway, on the sail, your port, destination, estimated time of arrival, and so on. You can enter this manually. There's an operator just sitting there pressing buttons. In AESI class B, this option doesn't exist and is not needed, but don't forget, if you have AESI class A. In case of trouble, problems, or if the boat is sinking, you are obligated to assist with AIS class B. You go to help only if you are confident in your abilities. You can assist and not just become another vessel nearby asking for help itself. That's the difference between commercial activity 
and non-commercial, which is AIS class A and AIS class B. Now let's say a few words about SARTAES, which is a search and rescue transponder or personal AES. It's a small device that you activate if you fall overboard and you, within a radius of two to three miles, you appear on chart plotters as a man overboard, a MOB, signaling that you're here, pick me up, I'm here. The boat Uasau turns around heads directly to the data from the AES and picks up the person starting uh, rescue operations. Yes, the range is small and yes, the antenna needs to be deployed. It's worn around the neck. Now I wanted to tell you about one small point. The AES is not only used on boats, it can also be found on drilling platforms. And it might have a number like 0005801 or two. And when you look at it, it might seem like nonsense. And it will be something like, what type of vessel is it? For example, a pleasure craft, a motor vessel, a cargo vessel, a drilling platform, a tug, or really any type of vessel. A drilling platform probably counts as a vessel too, as would be indicated in the parameters on your um, monitor. Now, an important point, I'll reveal probably a big secret to you. The military also use AIS, but they have the ability to shift their position. And when I was in the United States near Florida, a huge military ship passes by. But the AIS is 500 meters behind, probably to avoid targeting the AIS guidance system. However, data might vary and entities like the military can take advantage of this by simply shifting the AIS. Therefore, in such situations, you need to be vigilant. But the military is the military. And fortunately, others do not have this capability. Well, friends, I think this lesson was useful for you. We'll continue to post materials that I believe are important and useful both for general development and more specialized knowledge. Again, I remind you that our course will soon be online and you can purchase it in full. The course, I assure you, is really cool. And this lesson is a good example of that. Meanwhile, friends, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, the bell, and so on. Comments? in case I forgot to say something. Anyway, see you very soon. Bye.